Hello, everybody. Uh, once again, um, my name is Andrew. I am a Galileo Sky Technical Support Engineer, and today I will be hosting our webinar, uh, which is called Seven Features You Didn't Know About Galileo Sky Trackers. Uh, before we begin, uh, I just wanted to make a small announcement, uh, as well as on our previous webinar. Uh, I already told you that uh, we are starting a new par uh, support uh, partner program uh, concerning the webinars and our participants, because we uh, value very much uh, all you who uh, come to our webinars uh, time after time and uh, participate in them and ask your questions, your um, your uh, Participation is very important for us, uh, which is why we decided to uh, support your uh, efforts and your um, questions and so on by uh, introducing uh, small prizes uh, based on the year's uh, performance and year's uh, participation in our webinars. So uh, we will have top three places at the end of this year, 2019, and uh, the participants who will uh, be, uh, well, the uh, the most frequently uh, participating uh, people, <laughs> clients are, uh, will get uh, prizes. So for the third pre uh, place, it will be a Galileo Sky Tracker. For second place, this will be uh, a list of uh, souvenirs from our um, well, uh, headquarters city, and uh, the first place is a big surprise, so not to spoil yet, uh, I think that it will be known uh, near to uh, the end of the year. So um, we are all very happy always to see you in our webinars and hear your questions, and um, well, know that we are telling uh, something that is interesting for you and that uh, you uh, like and uh, use further in your work. So uh, we just wanted to uh, say you a small thank you uh, by that. Now, uh, let's go to the webinar. So uh, as usual, uh, we'll uh, look at what we are going to um, run through uh, this uh, today uh, on this webinar, uh, then look at some uh, rules of our webinars, and then we'll begin. So today we'll look at uh, seven points, as mentioned in the name of the webinar. It's uh, working with several easy logic algorithms, uh, then setting uh, and changing passwords for uh, remote configuration for our Galileo Scott tracker trackers for groups of trackers, uh, working with two Wigan 26 readers, uh, automatic switching between GPS and Wi-Fi, uh, something that was introduced not uh, long ago, which you might not know yet. Uh, we'll look at some useful commands to work with uh, Galileo Sky Trackers. Uh, we'll look at how to get driver IDs from different Tyco graphs. And uh, last and uh, the most complex one is we'll look at how to work with uh, how to read Canvas uh, using easy logic technology by scripting language, not by blocks. So we'll look at both, but uh, I will make emphasis on the uh, working with scripting language because. Uh, there are certain advantages to that. So about the webinar rules, uh, it will take around 45 minutes. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be sent to everyone who registered for this event uh, to the email that you, uh, that you wrote uh, when you registered. Uh, all the related questions can be, found, uh, can be asked on the uh, question tab, which is a special tab. Um, here on your uh, right upper corner. Uh, the icon, uh, icon of uh, question mark will open the question tab and you can write the question there. You can also write it in chat, but uh, it will be more uh, convenient for us to answer and reply to the questions if they are in the questions tab. So it's just uh, easier to control. So let's begin. Uh, number one is working with several easy logic algorithms. This is pretty simple. Uh, this was uh, introduced a long ago with the trackers Galileo Sky 7 and base block and uh, continued with OBD2 tracker. So uh, any of these trackers can work uh, on any firmware with uh, any number of uh, easy logic algorithms at the same time, simultaneously. Uh, you have a message of uh, if you want to delete the current uh, easy logic algorithms when you upload a new 
uh, algorithm via USB channel, but you're not obliged to do that. This is not necessary. You can keep uh, the the algorithms that uh, also already um, exist and add a new one. Um, uh, and yes, uh, as already mentioned, uh, this works only for Galileo SkyBase Block 7 and uh, OBD2. The only restrictions here are the um, the collateral size, uh, the, the uh, sum size of the uh, algorithms should not exceed 400 kilobytes. And uh, if you're using different uh, algorithms, uh, the algorithms with uh, working with Canvas can be only one. And uh, all the rest will not work. So uh, only one can work uh, simultaneously with the Canvas. Uh, number two, feature number two, changing passwords for a group of trackers. This was uh, added uh, not long ago. Uh, it allows to, um, well, you see, uh, as you see on the screen, uh, you, uh, when you are working uh, in remote configuration, you can uh, unite uh, trackers in groups. So in some uh, such folders that you can see on the left side of the screen. Uh, and uh, you can actually change password for remote configuration, which will um, be a restriction for all the rest who uh, use uh, the Galileo Sky Trackers and try to add them to the remote configuration account. Uh, so if they don't know the password, they will not be able to do that. Uh, so you can change any of them uh, one by one, but uh, Recently, we also also added a feature to change passwords to all devices in the group. So you just uh, right-click on the uh, group that you want, um, select the point, uh, the line change password for of all devices in the group, and set this new password for the devices in the group. So that's easy, uh, that's pretty um, Simple and uh, yet it will save you time if you have a lot of trackers and you have and you want to change the password from the uh, default. Default password is equal to email of the tracker. Uh, and also, one of the recent additions to the functionality of Galileo Sky Trackers is working with uh, two Wigan 26 readers simultaneously. So before we had only our option to use one connected to inputs in zero and in one. Uh, now we have uh, also inputs two and three also involved in Wigan 26, so we can use those for the second reader. Uh, the limits here, well, the trackers that support these are only Galileo SkyBase Block and 7.0, uh, and uh, the firmware should be 21 or higher. What is to be remembered here is that uh, not all readers that can that use Wigan 26 protocol can be used. Uh, only those uh, that are, that's have output signal length not less than 250 microseconds can be used in this case. Otherwise, the tracker will not be able to read the uh, values of the IDs uh, from the readers because it will be too fast for it. So 250 uh, mi microseconds or uh, even uh, a larger uh, signal rate. And uh, of course, uh, all values from both Wigan 26 uh, readers will always uh, be shown and displayed in the I button 2 field. So if you are using two of them sim uh, at the same time, meaning that you're uh, using a car different cards uh, with uh, two different readers at the same time, only one will be shown. So that is also for your consideration. Um, <clears throat> uh, as you know, uh, our trackers, several trackers, uh, like Galileo Sky Base Block Wi-Fi, Galileo Sky 7.0 Wi-Fi, uh, support uh, working with uh, Wi-Fi connection as well as uh, with GPRS, so GSM uh, connection. Um, we always had a uh, priority of Wi-Fi over GSM when the tracker could connect to either of them. Uh, but uh, recently we added a new feature which allows to uh, set a condition by which the tracker will switch from Wi-Fi to GSM um, automatically without using easy logic algorithm. Uh, this condition, this setting can be seen on the uh, right side of the slide. 
uh, in the Wi-Fi settings, uh, we added one more line, which is called RSSI. This is the signal rate of the uh, Wi-Fi signal uh, received by the tracker. It can have uh, values from micro, uh, minus 100 to 0, where minus 100 is the weakest signal, 0 is the strongest signal. So you set uh, the minimal uh, level of um, signal rate of the Wi-Fi uh, signal, uh, and if the, uh, if the connection that the tracker has has a weaker uh, RSSI value, the tracker will disconnect from Wi-Fi and try to connect to GPRS. So it's a solution when you have a not a stable Wi-Fi point and you want to make sure that the tracker will send data anyway, so that it will not connect to Wi-Fi point but will not be able to send any data because the connection is too weak. Um, then uh, we figured out that we have uh, certain commands that our clients may not yet know because they were um, added uh, not long ago and uh, well we didn't uh, have a huge uh, I don't know news about that uh, but still they are sometimes pretty useful so one of them first uh, of two commands that we wanted to sh cover here uh, is uh, the lead command so it um, uh, it covers the uh, ability to control the intensity of flight indication on the trackers. Uh, we are now talking only about Galileo Sky 7 and OBD2. No base block or uh, older trackers. Uh, because they don't have uh, one diet, they have uh, a number of diets. Uh, Galileo Sky 7 has one diet which can change colors and the same goes for OBD2. So here we can set the intensity, the uh, power level of light indication. Uh, the command is a let space and then uh, the value. Uh, value can be from zero, which is uh, let turned off to hundred, where uh, which means that the light indication is at maximum. So uh, if you want to uh, make sure that the driver doesn't see the tracker. For example, you want to hide it very much, uh, you can simply disable the light indication or make it very, very um, low uh, so that you can uh, see if the uh, there is anything wrong with the tracker, but at the same time, the driver will uh, not notice the indication uh, and not uh, spot where the tracker is located in the car. Uh, the second command is uh, a little bit more tricky. Uh, but yes, very useful. It's a first list command. Uh, it allows to uh, show the contents of the micro SD card in the tracker. So that, uh, as you know, uh, many of our trackers, uh, specifically Galileo Sky 7.0 and Base Block, can be used with micro SD cards, which allow to store uh, archive, uh, to store pictures, to store uh, keys, uh, trusted keys list. Um, audio files for playing and so on and so forth, uh, very many things. Uh, so um, sometimes you need to understand if the SD card is working as, at all, and if it is working, what files are there on the uh, microSD. So this command helps to uh, enlist uh, all those, uh, all those um, parameters uh, and show them uh, as a reply to this command. Uh, it, can, it is supported on uh, firmware 18.4 or higher, uh, and uh, there are certain limitations. Uh, first of all, the fslist um, command, if you want to just see the root of the, uh, of the microSD, you'll have to send it with space, so fslist space, that's the full um, command format. Uh, and uh, it will show us parts, uh, we can see only uh, up to 15 lines in one part, as you can see in the exam on the example uh, in the left uh, lower side. So uh, you see the reply here. Um, it shows uh, the content of the root folder, um, and uh, it's only 15 lines, and that's part one out of eight. So there are eight uh, parts of this list because there were many files when I used this command, uh, which show it. We'll now look a little bit closer. So uh, the uh, format of the command is fslist space uh, path to uh, to uh, read. Um, then uh, after uh, comma space part uh, without space actually comma part. Um, what does it mean? 
it means that uh, first of all if you want to look at a certain directory you need to set it in the path uh, for in the path format so FS list uh, well if we look at the previous slide we have here directory uh, arc so if you want to see the contents of this folder we can uh, send command FS list space arc uh, and uh, after comma, we set uh, what part of the list we want to show. For example, here we uh, received only uh, part one out of eight. If we want part two of the root folder, we would have to send FS list space comma two. That will give us second part of the root folder. Um, now, uh, let's look at the reply format uh, just so that we could uh, more easily read the reply the, the reply is content of then we set the dire uh, directory name as we can see here uh, content of and then since it's root folder there is nothing uh, shown and then uh, we have uh, each line uh, divided on uh, this uh, number of uh, parameters type date time size name and of course then we show a part which out of total number of parts so our type uh, is the element type which is shown d is for directory f is for file if we look back here we have four folders or four directories and then uh, 11 files uh, then we have the date of last edit and time of last edit again if we look here date of the last edit and time of the last edit when the file was last changed or directory was last changed uh, then we have uh, element size in bytes and element name so again uh, directories always show zero as size because uh, our system cannot read the size of a folder uh, but here we see uh, size in bytes of each WAV file and their uh, full name so it's a pretty convenient command when you're working with microSD card because you know that otherwise we cannot look or what is inside microSD card by ourselves. We have to uh, make uh, take it out of the tracker and connect to PC to look at the contents or synchronize uh, remotely using WebDAV. So this command is pretty convenient for uh, just seeing what's on the uh, microSD card. If we are taking a photo, then uh, if we took uh, successful uh, successfully the photo and the file was saved and so on there is a number of reasons why we should we should use that but uh, I myself uh, used it a lot and I should say it's pretty uh, convenient to use now a uh, pre last feature that I wanted to cover here is uh, getting the driver card IDs from integrated tachographs we currently have four uh, integrated takeographs, uh, which are Strich, Atoll, Mercury, uh, and Continental Video. The first three are pretty much the same and uh, pretty easy. Their, um, their integration is made using uh, firmware uh, via digital interfaces RS485 or RS232. Um, so, um, the driver IDs there are exported automatically and um, you just receive them as a parameter on the server. So uh, the, these settings are pretty basic and are pretty uh, easy to handle. Uh, but until recently we didn't have any uh, way to read the driver ID from the Continental Video Takeograph. So we uh, received this uh, opportunity recently using uh, a new uh, algorithm which is called uh, well there are there is uh, there are two different algorithms here which are uh, J1939TOGS ID driver 250 ENG and 500 ENG depending on what speed is used so basically uh, the thing here is that you um, load this algorithm on the tracker using a special command uh, and after that, the tracker uh, will automatically read uh, using the CAN bus data from the uh, video takeograph uh, 
uh, and uh, write it into a special tags, uh, which uh, you can see uh, the uh, example of such tags uh, on VL1. These are driver ID 1 and driver ID 2. Here are two cards used. One is from Romania, if I'm not mistaken. Second one is from Russia. So uh, the uh, things to remember here uh, are that uh, you will have to use uh, CAN interface for this driver ID and um, standard um, taker graph uh, parameters. Plus, you will be able, if uh, the speed is the same, you will be able to read the CAN bus itself using the standard G1939 protocol of the CAN bus, so the FMS standard, uh, and read uh, certain parameters which are covered in uh, in the uh, original J1939 TOGS algorithm that you can see on our uh, website. Um, at the same time, we can export DDD files by RS232 interface. Uh, and we can, uh, well, yes, that I already mentioned, that we can export and automatically translate the parameters from the vehicle CAN bus by this J1939 uh, standard. Um, uh, so here uh, there will be a small instruction later when it will be ready. I think it will be this month uh, until the end of the month. So um, you will get more information about that later. And the last one, uh, the thing that is uh, also quite um, convenient to work with, uh, as you might have known, and as you already know, I think, because you have been working with our trackers for some time, uh, we uh, support working with CAN bus and reading uh, the CAN bus using EasyLogic uh, algorithms. So on the left side here, you see uh, how it's uh, usually done using blocks. So there are six different blocks that can be used. Um, for initialization, the CAN bus, setting filter, enabling reception, and so on and so on. Um, but also, uh, we are able to work in the easy logic using scripting language, which means that uh, we uh, write the same blocks, but uh, in the form of language in one uh, block called script. It is uh, quite more convenient because uh, it's faster uh, to do, actually. Uh, usually typing is uh, faster than dragging uh, and r arranging blocks on the surface, plus um, the uh, work itself, uh, so the tracker works uh, better when it's uh, reading from the uh, scripting language itself, and uh, the logic is more clear. So all the uh, blocks that you see on the left side have uh, analo uh, well, uh, analogical um, functions in the, uh, in the scripting language itself. So these are just extracts from the scripting uh, language documentation, uh, which I'm pretty sure you have. If you don't, uh, write us in the comments and we'll send you. Um, uh, which cover uh, basically how to work with uh, the CAN bus using the scripting language. Now let's see an uh, example of uh, easy logic, very simple easy logic script working with uh, the CAN bus. Base, well, uh, first built from blocks, then written in the form of script. So this uh, is the algorithm uh, camera for some time. Um, so here uh, you see that, well, it's not, uh, although it's uh, made uh, well, pretty uh, accurate, uh, it's still not very easy to read. Plus, uh, there are, uh, you have to get where uh, what elements are going, uh, and so on. So there, it's just not uh, very easy to read, uh, easy to arrange, and so on. And it's just uh, reading only three identifiers and uh, saving them into uh, tags. So just um, you, ha you can uh, imagine what it will be like if it was 20 uh, identifiers that you have to read. So it will be a very huge uh, chain of blocks that you, have, that you will have to arrange uh, just for you to understand uh, and to read it carefully. And now uh, the same thing we saw on the previous page, but on the right side in a form of a script. So this is actually the whole script. 
uh, which covers uh, all which that we've seen on the previous page. Uh, just a number of functions and a number of um, conditions. Nothing uh, specific, nothing very hard. So any uh, tech specialists with basic skills of programming can do that and that won't be a problem at all. Um, so what uh, I wanted to say here is that uh, there are certain advantages of scripting language which are, which are uh, scripts are faster to create. Uh, you can actually copy some of the parts of the code and then uh, install it uh, in another algorithm and just make it up to your uh, new vehicle. Uh, the structure is less complex, so it's more easy to read when you uh, have uh, direct uh, structure from uh, from the upper side to the downside. And um, it allows to read, modify the data, and uh, write the data into tag uh, inside one algorithm block. Uh, amazing how how uh, it can be made simpler by that. That's pretty much all that I wanted to mention today. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I am now ready to answer any of your questions that you uh, may have uh, during uh, my uh, well during my speech. Let's just say so. Please um, ask them in the comments uh, or in the questions tab. I see that there is one uh, question already. Uh, okay, so can block base block light also be used for canvas? Of course, uh, Robert, uh, it can be used for uh, any uh, well, it can be used for canvas. Actually, uh, we have pretty much all of our trackers can be uh, connected to the canvas using CanH and CanL contacts. Uh, it can be direct connection to the canvas, uh, so cutting into the wires, it can be connecting to the OBD2 input, diagnostic input, and uh, it can be done using non-contact readers like uh, Nikon or can crocodiles. Uh, when you can, uh, but here you will be able only to read data, not to send something to the canvas. Okay, so um, any please, if you have any more questions on these uh, features, maybe um, you can write which features are uh, you might find useful uh, in your further work because um, I've covered some <laughs> uh, that are uh, quite uh, interesting to work with. So uh, please write in the comments which which you liked more, which you liked less. Um, and if you have any questions on, on any of this feature, please ask. I'm here to answer the questions. Also, um, again, I would like to mention that um, we are having this uh, for the newcomers who missed the beginning of the webinar. Uh, we are having uh, a new, uh, well, uh, participant support program for our clients for webinars uh, since we like very much when you participate in our webinars and uh, uh, ask your questions and uh, say what you want to hear next uh, we wanted to uh, give you well show you our gratitude in a form of small present so we'll have uh, a contest of who of our clients participates more uh, in our webinar uh, during this year, so from the beginning of the year and up to the end of 2019. And then we'll have uh, a little uh, prizes for uh, the most um, frequently uh, participating uh, clients. Uh, the third place uh, will have a Galeo Sky Tracker as a present, as a prize. Uh, second place will have uh, some uh, set of our souvenirs from our headquarters city. And the first place is for now a surprise, so you'll have more information on that uh, after, uh, well, near the new year, um, near the end of this year. 
So uh, we really like when you participate and ask questions, although today you seem not to. Uh, and um, when you uh, show your opinion on uh, our uh, information and our trackers and our technology. So I see two more questions arrived. Uh, okay, yes, about the upgrading of the old trackers. Well, actually, you better uh, write this question to our uh, support team because uh, we'll have uh, to investigate a little bit more. But basically, uh, you, I think that you all know that we had certain thing uh, in July with the navigation units, so we have to uh, up upgrade the firmware. If there are some problems with the uh, old trackers, uh, upgrading uh, remotely. You can try upgrading them locally by USB channel and also um, you can try just uh, sending the command several times because sometimes uh, it just applies not from the first try. Uh, that is due to uh, old version of the loader inside the tracker because the trackers themselves are uh, pretty old. Uh, about the question of John, uh, can we have the Wi-Fi connection only trigger at certain geozones? Well, geofences, of course, uh, we can uh, do that as well. Although that will require uh, using easy logic algorithm at this time, but it's pretty easy. So you just um, create uh, uh, the geofences either in KML file, so polygonal geofences, and load them on the micro SD, or you can uh, create them inside the easy logic. Uh, if they're a circle or a rectangular by the coordinate axis. Uh, and uh, then we check if the tracker is uh, in this or that geofence. If yes, we can apply the Wi-Fi settings, uh, special Wi-Fi settings for the tracker. If no, uh, then, we'll, uh, then we'll continue using GSM. Um, yeah, sure, you're welcome. So uh, since there are no more questions, well, uh, you just think now, we are not yet done. I just wanted to make also a small announcement. Uh, we'll have uh, a new webinar in two weeks. Uh, I will be the host again, and uh, we'll talk about uh, a brand new function in our tracker uh, connected to CanScanner tool, which I'm pretty sure many of you used and keep using for now. So we'll introduce um, a can logger instrument, can logger tool uh, that will uh, be able to um, to record the log of uh, the canvas working, uh, and uh, so you you will be able to work with this uh, can logger uh, not only uh, inside your car, inside your vehicle, but also afterwards in the office to analyze the can data and so on. So uh, that's a pretty useful tool. Uh, and we'll uh, just uh, have a, a more precise look to that. And yes, in the chat, you can see the link to this uh, upcoming webinar. Um, so I recommend you to register. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so Robert also um, wrote, actually, base block light do, does have a easy logic feature. Uh, so, first of all, it uh, supports easy logic uh, as well as a common <laughs> uh, any, and it supports any number of easy logic algorithms as well. So, ba base block light is, here is the same as base block uh, optimum, for example. Where the difference between those is only several uh, interfaces and. Um, um, and uh, ability to uh, opportunity to install a micro SD card. All the rest is the same. So um, base block works with easy logic. Base block works with works with canvas. It all can be done. And you don't have to activate anything. Uh, easy logic is supported uh, on all our trackers from the start. The same goes to canvas. All right, then, um, if there are no more questions, just think while we're here. Um, but still, uh, uh -huh. OK. OK, so I guess Robert doesn't have any questions as well. Um, so 
thank you very much yes for your attention thank you very much for your participation uh, it was uh, good work with you today I hope that you um, got uh, many new information uh, that you will be able to use further in your work in your projects uh, that it was useful and that you uh, found something for yourself in this